If you're applying to positions and you feel viciously underqualified, but you figure, what's the worst that could happen? They say no. Us computer science students looking at the resume that we built at 2 a.m. fueled on nothing but Red Bull and dreams of that sweet fan glory will sometimes fail to send in that Hail Mary application. But with my finger on the trigger, applying to Google last fall, I shot my shot, hoping that I would have better luck than the last time I shot my shot. I mean, Google will at least respond, right? Well, they didn't until four months later when my dreams of submitting an impressive salary to Levels at FYI were resurrected with an invite to complete an online assessment. This was the beginning of the Google Software Engineering Internship Application Interview Pipeline, and little did I know, it would work out. Now, something that makes this an especially Hail Mary application is that I had not completed a single computer science class up until this point. I was completely self-taught and had just finished six months of programming and building projects to optimize my resume for this interview season. I talked about it a lot in my previous videos, but today we're gonna start the story at the application. I wasn't even planning on applying to Google, but after I interviewed a software engineer there who was actually the brother of one of my business professors, I was convinced that I should at least give it a try and I got a referral from a family friend. It wasn't until four months later that I heard back and by that point I had already resided my aspirations to Amazon, which would have been a good internship in Austin, Texas, but I knew, I knew that Google would take things to the next level. The problem was that I applied in October and Google got back to me in January, so I had a few months there of doing absolutely zero interview prep. Turns out 19 credits of straight STEM classes can be a lot for any computer science student, and I was rusty. So trigger week-long leak code grind in order to just completely online assessment. Throughout this video, we're gonna be compiling a list of lessons learned, and the first one to tack on there is to stay sharp. I should have definitely been doing just a couple of leak code problems a week so that I didn't lose track of my data structures and algorithm skills. Something that makes the Google Online Assessment unique compared to the likes of CodeSignal or HackerRank is that in those situations, you get two problems and they show you a bunch of test cases that your code is gonna be run against. But with Google, they only give you two. So it's up to you to think of different edge cases and inputs that might cause different bugs in your solution. And a couple of days later, I was asked to fill out a candidate questionnaire, which would actually turn out to be super important later. But in the meantime, I still had one more round of interviews to pass before moving on to the mysterious project search stage. I was assigned a recruiter and I was scheduled for two back-to-back 45-minute -back interviews. And honestly, having a recruiter was just completely mind-blowing. But man, he must have thought I was a moron because everyone's worst nightmare is showing up to an interview late and I didn't do that. But it turns out that all Google interview times are in PST, not EST. Um, so I have an extra three hours to prep, which is good because I still feel completely unprepared. But now I look like an idiot because I am an idiot and this is why I'm not gonna get into Google. <laughs> I actually scheduled an interview and then rescheduled it thinking that it would conflict with one of my classes. Lesson learned, check your time zones. I actually vlogged the interview process this day. Now, I could honestly go on forever about these two 45 minute interviews, so if you want me to make a more detailed video, then please leave a comment down below. Uh, it is it is 8.48 in California right now, which leaves me an hour and 12 minutes until my Google interview. I'd say of all the Google tagged questions that I looked at, I could confidently answer about a third of them. And there are two questions today. So that gives me a one in nine probability of getting two questions that I can confidently answer. First interview down, second interview in like 15 minutes. How did the first one go? It was a one dimensional dynamic programming problem. And I think I did a good job of articulating all of my thoughts. I think I did a bad job. I kind of fumbled the ball on the last like two lines of code. Um, but then he gave me a hint, and after he gave me the hint, it all kind of, you know, fell together. Um, so I'd say, so I know Google has no higher, leaning no higher, leaning higher, higher. I don't think I got higher. I think I'm somewhere in between leaning no higher and leaning higher, depending on, you know, basically how my communication skills were. 15 minute break between interviews? Oh my God, I'm thinking I failed that. I am screwed for the next one. I got another phone call. A PhD from Europe doing work in machine learning completely 
nothing to do with anything from leak code. But I actually had a super interesting conversation with him and the question was about how to transpose a matrix given different restraints. It was really a test of system design and computer architecture and just algorithmic thinking. I loved the interview and I think I actually did pretty well on it. And now we wait. I was glued to my inbox, but unlike other companies where after you meet their hiring bar, you will be randomly assigned to a project and a team, with Google, you have to go through the project search stage and the attentive viewers might have figured out by now that this is where that candidate questionnaire that I mentioned comes in. That candidate questionnaire has turned into somewhat of an intern profile where potential managers take a stack of them and swipe through like a 10 out of 10 that knows their worth on Tinder. Left, left, I'll talk to you for a bit, but I'll probably ghost you, left, right. And after interviewing a few candidates, host managers decide who will be their summer fling and ghost the rest. College boys try to optimize their Tinder profiles and they also try to optimize their questionnaires. There was a massive discord full of other potential interns all trying to figure out tips and tricks for how to match with the best teams. What locations took the most interns? What topics could you be interested in that would maximize your chance at getting a shot? Should you put that you're interested in machine learning because you are in interested in machine learning, but you really don't know anything about machine learning. My personal advice, basically put your resume down again, talk about where you see yourself going in software engineering and throw a little bit of personal flair. When managers do have that 30 minute conversation with potential interns, some will ask straight up system design questions, others will just go over your resume and others have basically already decided that they want you and it's just a getting to know each other conversation. It is completely random and there's absolutely no advice that anyone can give for how to do well in your host manager interview. When I got the offer, it honestly felt like a chapter of my life had closed. It had been roughly a year since I had really started to learn how to code and prepare for these interviews. And at, at the time, my dream was Google. I thought it would take me at least two years before I would even have a shot, but here I am way sooner than I had expected and completely self-taught. Yes, I'm a computer science student. Yes, I'm gonna get a computer science degree. But when I completed the interviews, I had only completed Intro to Computer Science. Lesson learned, you really can teach yourself anything with the internet. I only had one more decision to make and that was to be remote or to be in person. And honestly, I live in a beach town and it's lit in the summer. And the option was to move to Chicago. So would I rather spend a bunch of money and move to Chicago or save a bunch of money and hang out with my friends one last summer? I'm gonna have the rest of my life to work in a corporate office and as awesome as Google offices are, and I am sure they really are that awesome, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty content being remote for one more summer. So that's what I chose. What's next? Well, honestly, I've thought about it and I think I'm just gonna optimize for a return offer at Google, apply to some other companies with Google on my resume, just kind of see what happens. Where can I get interviews? I could move into high frequency trading. That would kind of be the step up from Fang. They pay more, they or might be considered more prestigious depending on who you talk to. Uh, but it's also a different type of work. So I'm not entirely sure that it suits me, but it's definitely something to consider. It's definitely something I'll apply to. Outside of software engineering, I could consider moving into quant finance using all that math knowledge that I've acquired over the past two semesters of math classes. But honestly, I'm not sure that I would like quant long-term. I think for a year or two, it would be a blast to be quant. Uh, but long term, I definitely see myself in software engineering, in big tech, in a startup or starting my own company or something along those lines. So if I do apply to quant roles, quant trading roles, then it'll be for an internship. It'll just be for a new grad role to do for a couple years before eventually moving into tech. If somebody just asks me, what do you want? What's the safe bet? Where are you going? Let's just go full time at Google. There's really just no reason not to. And I actually don't know too, too much about what my project is going to be this summer. I will definitely make videos describing it in more detail as I learn more, but some of it is gonna be probably shrouded in an NDA. But what I do know is that I'll be under platforms and ecosystems working in Java on Android, and I'll be doing something with an API that uh, you, apps use to communicate with the device to figure out what the device is currently doing. Is it charging? Is it turned off? How long has it been since the last time it updated? That type of stuff. This was a very different style compared to my other videos. I don't know if you can tell, it was more scripted than I normally am. And I did a lot more kind of moving around my bedroom to cut the camera and keep you interested in editing. I'm gonna use more B-roll. I'm gonna use uh, different storytelling techniques. I'm gonna be cutting it different. I, I really wanna, 
you know, optimize, optimize, optimize this video, make this video the best video that I'm capable of making right now. So hopefully it does well. Hopefully you like it, comment, subscribe, and that's gonna be it. Peace.